In this video, we're going to talk about the diatomic elements, elements that exist in nature as a diatomic molecule. And there are seven of them that you really need to know. The first element is hydrogen, and then nitrogen, oxygen, fluorine, chlorine, bromine, and iodine. Those are the seven diatomic elements. So think of the prefix di. Di means two. These elements exist as diatomic molecules. A molecule is a particle with two or more atoms. So hydrogen gas in its natural state exists as H2, a diatomic molecule. Nitrogen gas in its natural state exists as N2. Oxygen gas exists as O2. Now oxygen doesn't always exist as O2, but under standard conditions, that is at room temperature and at an atmospheric pressure of 1 ATM, it is most stable in this form. Now there are other allotropes of oxygen. For instance, ozone, you heard of this one. In the upper atmosphere, you'll find ozone, which exists as O3. So that's an allotrope of oxygen. It's another form of elemental oxygen. But the most common form of oxygen that we see or that we breathe on Earth is O2. It's the diatomic form of oxygen. That's the most stable form. But keep in mind, there are other forms of these elements. Fluorine, in its natural state, exists as F2. It's also diatomic. Chlorine gas, Cl2. Bromine is a liquid at room temperature, but it exists as a diatomic molecule, Br2. And iodine is a solid at room temperature. It exists as I2. Now let's talk about the Lewis structures of these molecules. Hydrogen likes to form one bond, so it looks like this. Nitrogen likes to form three bonds, so each nitrogen atom will have three bonds and a lone pair. Nitrogen has five valence electrons. It needs three more electrons to get to eight to fill its outermost energy level and satisfy the octet rule. So that's why nitrogen likes to form three bonds because it needs three more electrons to get to eight. Oxygen is in group 6A of the periodic table. And so it has six valence electrons. It needs two more electrons to get to eight. So oxygen likes to form two bonds. And this is the chemical structure of O2. Each oxygen atom has two bonds and two lone pairs. Fluorine has seven valence electrons. It needs one more to get to eight. So to gain that extra electron, fluorine likes to form just one bond. So the halogens have a very similar Lewis structure. Cl2, Br2, I2, they look very similar. Each of them have three lone pairs. Now, there are some other elements that are not diatomic. For instance, phosphorus. In its natural state, phosphorus exists as P4. However, there are other forms of phosphorus. This is not the only one. And sulfur, one of its most common forms is S8. Now, because sulfur and oxygen are in the same group, the same column, they both like to form two bonds. And phosphorus and nitrogen, they're in the same column, so they both like to form three bonds. Now, let's draw the Lewis structure of phosphorus, P4. So we have four phosphorus atoms, one in the center and three on the outside. Like nitrogen, each phosphorus atom wants to form three bonds with one lone pair that isn't in a bond. And the other three phosphorus atoms will also each have three bonds and one lone pair. So this is the chemical structure of the element P4. Now sulfur, S8, it forms an octahedral structure.
So we're going to have to create the shape of an octagon. Now, like oxygen, each sulfur atom likes to form two bonds. And like oxygen, they will both have two lone pairs. So that's the Lewis structure of the S8 molecule. Now, even though these molecules are not diatomic, I decided just to put them in this video because why not? But that's it for this video. So hopefully you find it to be informative and educational. And uh, thanks for watching.